What is up guys? Today we are back with another video today and as you saw by the title we are going to be talking about circumcision and why I regret my decision. Now I know this is a different kind of video than I usually do. I do mainly OCD and other types of stuff like that. This is something that I wanted to talk about and kind of share with people and kind of give my experience and my thoughts about circumcision after I went through it when I was 19 years old and me being 24 right now and having five full years to completely recap and just take away everything that I've learned, what I've experienced to get into it. I was circumcised at 19 years old. Now, a little bit of backstory behind the decision to get circumcised. Now, I grew up uh, uncircumcised, right? So I had my foreskin completely intact. Um, I never really knew that circumcision was a thing. I just assumed that all men had the same type of penis, which was a fully uncircumcised penis with like, you know, the foreskin completely attached. I thought everyone had that. But there was this one time where I was actually going to the bathroom and my dad happened to be in the bathroom as well. This was when I was like around seven years old. And he noticed that when I was peeing that I actually had all my foreskin still intact. And then he looked at me and he said, oh, you're not circumcised? And you know, I'm thinking, I don't even know what that is. And then basically what he did is that he said, oh, try pulling it back a bit more. And then I did, I pulled it back and then he said, a little bit more. So I kept pulling on the foreskin and then he's like a little bit more and then I said I can't that's as much as I can go. So what he did is that he basically grabbed my foreskin and then he kind of just pulled it back and initially the pain was so bad but then I saw what my penis looked like underneath my foreskin for the first time. Now basically throughout my entire life I never really knew that I could do that or that the foreskin could be retracted that far. It's not up until that point. And then when I saw it, I was like, oh, that looks weird. It looks different. And it actually stayed that way for a few days. I would say two to three days. And then there was this one day when I had to go to the bathroom in second grade and I went to the bathroom and I went to the urinal and I saw that my foreskin was back to where it was, over the head of the penis. And after that, you know, my dad never really said anything. He realized that, you know, obviously it can't really stay like that the whole time. And he didn't get a circumcision for me. I, I believe he is circumcised, which is why I think he felt like I should have the same type of penis as he did. Now, throughout my childhood and adolescence and teenage years, I did not take care of my penis whatsoever. I didn't pull back the foreskin and clean um, the head of the penis with soap or water. For one, guys, I believe I had this thing called phismosis. It's basically where the foreskin of the penis is too tight to retract and you can't really pull it back farther than a certain point. Now, there are certain things that you can do to make that better, like little tiny stretches. So, I'll, so throughout my adolescence and teenage years, I did not wash it. And even if I tried, it would only be like in the tip area. Like it would, I couldn't pull it back as far as I could. So what I would do is that I would just try to like, you know, just clean the tip and where the line was. And that would be it. And I had a lot of problems with infections, a lot of problems with soreness. And a lot of times I would have... Um, and a lot of times I would have, I believe it's called smegma or discharge that would just come out of my penis and it was like yellowish um, gooey stuff that smelled really horrible that would just kind of come out of nowhere and it would make my penis smell really bad and I never cleaned it, you know? So, you know, as I'm going through life, I'm going through, uh, and, you know, as I'm going through life having an uncircumcised penis, I find masturbation when I am in middle school. So I started masturbating when I'm in seventh grade, right? And when I started masturbating when I was in seventh grade, I could not control myself. I did it almost all the time. Um, it was this new thing that I found that my friends were telling me about. So I thought, damn, this feels amazing. So I would do it like two to three times a day and I was hooked for a while. I'm not really sure how long that was, but I definitely was hooked for a long period of time. And what happened was is that a lot of times when I would masturbate, you know, once the sperm came out, I wasn't cleaning the side of my penis like I should have been. A lot of stuff was still being stuck inside the foreskin, which was creating a foul smell and also building up smegma and other things that made my penis really sore and very dirty. So fast forward to junior year of high school and I'm doing a little bit of physical activities with this one girl I know. And what happened is that um, I got to do certain things that I had never experienced before in my life up until that point. So obviously, I was experiencing, experiencing some things that were, you know, new to me, to say the least. So what happened was that when we were doing our activities, um, my penis fully retracted, the foreskin fully retracted behind the head. 
and I felt a severe numbness when my penis would hit my jeans or my underwear. And I just could not picture, or I just could not think of why that was happening. So then I look underneath my pants and I see that the around the head of the penis is ridiculously red and sore. And I realized that there was something that I needed to do about this. So I believe I went to the doctor soon after that and he put me on some creams and little by little I was able to clean more and more and more of my penis and I was able to retract it farther than I was before. But the thing was is that I wasn't really letting my penis heal. I was still masturbating up until that point and I, was, I should have let it heal and it was still being sore and a lot of times I felt like the cream that I was given wasn't working and I wasn't really consistent with my regimen of cleaning my penis as I should have. So after high school is over, I'm dealing with this issue on and off. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. I'm not really, nothing's really changing if I'm being honest with you. Up until I am 19 years old, right? Um, I go back to the doctor again because I'm having the same issue of, you know, some soreness there and thinking, okay, I need to fix this. And I tell the doctor, you know, like I'm experiencing a lot of soreness, a lot of redness on the side of my penis. When, and I pulled it back and I showed him that I also couldn't pull it back as much as I could. And he said, oh, that's phismosis. And what he recommended was a circumcision. And I said, really, well, why a circumcision? And he said, well, I can give you creams and if they don't work, I don't know if there's something else that we can do, but with a circumcision, it's gonna go away for sure. You know, he gave me all these things about, you know, lower risk of STDs, lower risk of infection, and lower risk of all this other stuff. And me being, you know, 19 years old, taking advice from one doctor, I thought, okay, well, let me go back and rethink this, okay? So I go back and do all these, you know, research topics. I go on Google and I type in, what is it, what is it like having a circumcised penis? What is sex like having a circumcised penis? What are the differences? You know, and I see a lot of, for some websites had men and they basically rated their sensitivity uh, from 1 to 10 or they rated it from their past when they had foreskin and basically what happened was that they said that they didn't feel any difference at all. It actually felt better and that they could have more pleasurable sex and that it was more pleasurable for their wife. Some said they did feel a de decrease in sensitivity and you know, I was really on the fence about things because I really didn't want to make a decision that eventually I would regret. So after thinking about everything and thinking about how like my penis was feeling, you know, the potential of getting rid of any unwanted infections and redness and anything like that, I, and I eventually decide to get the circumcision and I told my doctor, okay, let's do this. So the procedure, as you guys know, was the cutting of my foreskin off of my penis. Procedure was very simple. I think it took 30 minutes. I was out cold. I woke up. I looked down at my groin area and I realized that part of my penis was no longer there. And what happened in that following week was some of the worst pain I've ever felt. When I woke up and had an erection, it felt like someone was pulling um, on my penis and it felt horrible. Uh, the first time I took a shower was terrible. I had to take off the bandages. I saw blood, there was stitches around, um, there was stitches around where the foreskin used to be and it was completely different. It took about a week and a half maybe to fully heal and it was a lot different for me. And you know, at the, when it came down to the penis finally healing and working as it should, I decided to try masturbation. So what did I do? So the first time I tried masturbation, I usually just used my hand, right? I didn't use any lotion, I didn't use any um, lubricants, I would just use my hand when I had my foreskin because the foreskin provides natural lubrication for the head of the penis. Now, what happened? What happened? Well, my hands are not very soft and basically I could not keep an erection because it felt like it was way too rough on the head of the penis. And what happened to my penis along the way was that before when I had foreskin, it was very slimy and it had a more of a gloss look to it. After the foreskin was taken off, it became more rough and had more of a rubbery texture. So I initially felt like I had basically changed the way my penis looked and felt. So masturbation, after that was different because I had to use a lubricant to give the same feeling as my foreskin did before. And that was different. It's not a big deal anymore, but it is something that I felt like this isn't something that's natural and something that should not be done if you have to use a lubrication to pleasure yourself. And basically as the years went on, I basically did not find really much to regret of the circumcision. 
Um, I felt like sex was still pleasurable. I could still do a lot of things. Um, it looked decent, the head of the penis, you know, when I did have an erection, I did feel weird like seeing, you know, some of the stitch marks there and having like that little scar of the cut tissue that was cut off. And it just felt really weird. And I realized that the more and more, I realized as the years went on and the more I had sex, there was a feeling of less sensitivity on my penis because the difference was the difference of when you have a foreskin versus when you don't have foreskin. It seems like you have to have more friction to feel stuff. And you can still feel stuff, which is good, but it doesn't feel like you, but it definitely feels like when you're circumcised, you definitely need more friction and more penetration action to get off. If you guys know what I'm saying or to feel better, you know, because, when your foreskin is still intact, that's providing a lot of natural lubrication. When you're aroused, it creates a lot of lubrication, so you don't need to feel like you're dry, which is the same thing for a lot of women. They produce some sort of liquid, which I don't really know what it is, but it makes them wet as well, as any man who has had sex with a woman knows. And I felt like that's such a natural part of being a human, you know, having your body do things that make it easier to, you know, do physical activities like sex. If a female has that same characteristic, then why do males need to cut off a part of that that helps them have sex or that's there for a reason? And the more I started thinking about it, the more I was like, you know what? I should have just taken better care of my hygiene. I should have just taken care of my penis. I should have gotten more advice from another doctor. But, you know, me at that point thought doctors, what they say is all right. You know, they know better and they all think alike when that is not the case whatsoever. Doctors, as we all know, can be wrong a lot of the time. Doctors don't know the answer to every single medical issue that has gone on in the world or that you are dealing with. I have had terrible advice given to me by therapists, psychiatrists, and sometimes I feel like when I go in with a topic, I know more about them than they do. Teachers can be wrong, psychiatrists can be wrong, therapists can be wrong, doctors can be wrong. They can give bad advice, they can say things that are not true. And I fully found that out in my life up until this point. So, closing thoughts. If you are really interested in getting a circumcision, I would highly advise you to get multiple opinions from doctors, read up on it. If you do not care about less sensitivity, having that lubrication, and you just wanna get rid of that foreskin because maybe it's too tight, um, sure, go for it. But if you wanna keep a natural part of your body, then I suggest trying some stretches to keep pulling it back. Maybe try washing it more. Lay off the masturbation, lay off the sex so your penis can heal. Try doing things that don't require to, <laughs> try doing things that don't require for you to cut off a part of your penis. Like if I have lice on my head or if I, my hair is dirty, I'm not just gonna shave it off. I'm actually gonna wash it and try to take care of it just cause it's easier, you know? I feel like a lot of us should take that same precaution when it comes to circumcising our kids or getting a circumcision. You know, now that I've gone through this, I feel like circumcision shouldn't be decided by the parents. That is something that should be decided by the person who is gonna go through that. Because as a baby, you don't know what's going on. You don't have any sort of consideration or a vote in what happens to your penis when I feel like you should. So, you know, I'm totally against circumcising babies. I feel like if you are gonna circumcise them, you should leave that option for them in the future. Like I had it, and even then, I feel like I made a mistake. And that is why I want to tell people who are going to watch this to why I feel like circumcision was a mistake. How is sex? It's fine. It's good. It feels great. It can still be amazing, which, you know, it is. But there has to be a point where, like, you do notice there is a loss of sensitivity where now it's gone. Not completely gone, but there is a loss of sensitivity. Why would that be something that you would wanna lose in terms of your sexual life as well? So if you guys found that helpful, drop a like, leave a comment, tell me what you guys think about circumcision. If you guys disagree with me, leave a comment. Don't be too, too hurtful, don't be too mean. Let's keep it civil and just have a nice conversation about what you guys feel on circumcision. Have you had it? How do you feel about having a circumcision now? Is there a difference between before and after you had it? Let me know. And once again, I thank you guys again for coming back to the channel. I know it's been a while since I released some stuff, but you know, I've been focused on school right now. Uh, if you guys don't know, I am taking some science courses to become a physical therapist. And right now I'm taking anatomy and it is super hard. So I've been studying like almost every day for that class. 
And But yeah, I am not going to give up on YouTube. I will still upload. I will still put out more content eventually. And I thank you guys again for being a subscriber. And I will hope to see you guys later. Bye.